Can you come out and play? There's lots to do! Yeah, there's lots to do! You can come over to my house! We can play at the beach! Bring your friends! We can visit the vet! We can find neat stuff in the garden! Here too! We can camp in the forest! Whenever you want to go to a different place to play, just click on the signpost. Then click the map where you want to go. If you need help, click the ambulance. Okay, ready when you are. See ya! Hey, Ozzy. I haven't finished cleaning this part of the ocean yet. Don't get caught in my line. Hey, Rufus. I'm not garbage. <laughs> I told you. I wasn't done cleaning yet. Rufus, what do you do here every day anyway? I'm doing very important work here. Keeping the ocean clean and safe for our friends in the neighborhood. Rufus. What, Ozzy? Why do people throw away their junk in our home? Oh, I'm not sure, Ozzy. But I guess they don't know just how much it hurts us. Uh, I'm almost done for today. Wanna help tomorrow? Okay, I'll be back then. Yummy! I'll be more careful next time. I can hear the ocean. <laughs> I can feel it too. Did you ever wonder how the rain becomes snow or ice? Making rain sounds like something only the clouds could do, doesn't it? But in this experiment, you'll be able to see just how the same exact water changes from rain to snow or ice. It also forms into a cloud and back into rain again. Now, collect some rainwater if you can. If there's none around, you can use water from the tap. Just pretend that you got it from outside, okay? Good.
Put the rainwater in a pan. Place it in the freezer. This is what happens to water when the temperature outside drops below the freezing mark. Leave it in there until it's frozen. Pretty soon, that warm rainwater will be a big block of ice. Now, do this. Take the pan out of the freezer and let it warm up. What happened to the ice? That's right. It melted back into its liquid form. That's what happens when you build a snowman out of snow and then it warms up outside. The snow, which is frozen water, melts back into its liquid form and your snowman turns into a big puddle. When the ice in your pan has melted, have an adult put it on the stove and heat it up to boiling. If you look closely, you will see steam coming out of the pan. That's what a cloud is. Water in its gaseous state. That water vapor is really little teeny droplets of the same rainwater you had when you started. Are you ready to make it rain now? Then fill a pie plate with ice cubes. Have an adult hold it over the steam. See what happens when the hot steam cloud meets the cold plate? It turns back into water. Soon, the water droplets become too big and they fall to the earth, and that's what we call rain. Good! Now you don't have to wonder anymore how rain becomes snow or ice. What is this seaweed? I can't see a thing. Mom! Dad! I've been adopted! I said snail, not whale. Oh, let's keep him. He's so cute. I need a suit for a recital. Well, let's see. You're about a size 700. Am I not right? To play Ozzy's match, it's... Slimer. Eagle. Slimer. Eagle. Ducky duck. Horse. Pig. Crab. Duck. Crab. Monkey. Monkey. Elephant. Horse. Pig. Bunny. Pig. Ducky duck. Panting duck. Hello. Ducky duck. Panting duck. Ducky duck. Pan Panting. Bunny way. Ducky. Careful.
Sometimes we don't know how our actions may hurt others on our planet. Something as simple as throwing away plastic six-pack rings can hurt baby seals. They might swim into it, and because they have no arms, they can't get it off. In this simple exercise, you will learn how it feels to be tangled up in litter and unable to free yourself. Then you will learn an easy way that you can make a difference. All you need is a plastic six-pack ring, a rubber band, and a pair of scissors. First, slip the rubber band over your thumb and stretch it across the back of your hand and over your pinky finger. Now, try to get free without using anything else to help you, not even your other hand. Dunk your hand into a sink full of water. Pretend you are a baby seal trying to get loose from some beach trash. Whew. Now, you can see why it's important to keep trash where it belongs and not in the water where it can hurt a small water animal. One small thing you can do to make a big difference is to snip the rings of a six-pack holder before you throw it away. Then, if it accidentally finds its way to the sea, no one will get caught in it. You are really helping. Good for you! Welcome to Ozzy's Hidden Picture Game. I don't... Sorry, miss... The parrot's near the palm tree. I don't think... See you later. I don't think so. See you... No. No. Nope. The parrot's near the palm tree. Sorry, missed it. See you later, alligator. <laughs> to play Ozzy's puzzler game, drag the puzzle pieces to where you think they belong.
Hold the shift key down and click me again. To play Ozzy's match a pair game, pick a shell. Any shell. Guess again. Good guess. Try again later. Pinch me. 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 Oh, that tickled. Pinch me. Pinch me. Oh, that tickled. When the chest opens, you have found a buried treasure. Hold down the shift key and click once to uncover a game or experiment. <laughs> Whoa. Good job. You're cool. Good job. Good job. Yummy. <laughs> Yummy. Yummy. You're cool. Oh, Ozzy, you always have trouble with that hose. Bungie, where are you hiding now? Hey, Ozzy, I want you to plant more of these great vegetables. So I can eat them and build my cocoon, because I can't wait to become a butterfly. I really like the lettuce. Hey, Bungie, where'd you go? Hey, I'll look for Bungie in the shed. You look for him in the garden. I'll bet you'll find a lot of other neat things as well. Pew! Thanks. No problem. Aren't they cute? Two peas in a pod. Coming through! No... Ray... Me... <laughs>
I'm sprouting in here. Would you like to grow your very own tree? You don't even need a big backyard. You can even grow one indoors. First, use an avocado in a salad or guacamole. Then, keep the huge seed to sprout an avocado tree. Dry your seed for a day or two. Peel off the outer coating. Stick three toothpicks into the middle of the seed so that it can be suspended in a jar of water. Place the seed base down, pointed end up, into a jar of warm water. Keep the water level up to the bottom third of the seed. Carefully place the jar in a warm, dark spot. Be sure to keep an eye on the water level. After several weeks, roots should shoot out. When they do, put the jar in a sunny spot and wait for a stem to push its way out of the top of the seed. When the stem is about four inches high, you are ready to plant your tree in soil. Put some gravel in the bottom of a flower pot. Cover the gravel with some potting soil. Take the seed and hold it over the potting soil. Keep holding it while a friend puts more potting soil around the roots and pit until only one half inch is showing above the soil. Water it well. In the winter, keep your tree in a sunny, warm place. In the warm weather, you can put it outside. Your tree will be your new friend for a long time. Have you ever seen a yellow flower as tall as your parents? That's a sunflower. For this activity, you must first plant a sunflower seed and watch it grow into a huge sunflower plant. Then, when it's time to cut them down, you can enjoy a delicious and crunchy snack right from your very own sunflower. When the petals fall from your sunflower and the birds are pecking at the seeds, it's harvest time. Cut off the sunflower, leaving about a foot of stalk. Hang the sunflower upside down in a dry and airy place. When the seeds are dry, rub them off with your hand. Put them in an airtight tin or box. When you're ready for a snack, shell the seeds and put them on a cookie sheet. Bake in an oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes. Shake the pan a few times. Keep a close watch because they can burn easily. When they're ready, take them out and gobble up a yummy snack. Next time, plant more seeds. Welcome to Ozzy's Hidden Picture. Oh. Mm. You're getting closer. Not quite. Mmm, I sure would like to have a banana. Not yummy grapes. Try again. You're getting closer. 
Mmm, I sure would like to have a banana. Not quite. Mm. Oh, you're... Oh. You're cool. Whoa! <laughs> Let it Yummy. Good job. Would you like to give a present to someone? Here is a way you can share beautiful plants with others. All you need to make new plants are pieces from the plants you have. Some good choices to start with are some house plants, herbs, a cactus, flowers, or vines. When you get some new plants started, you can give them away to your friends. Ask if it's all right to cut a healthy branch from a plant in your house. If it's okay, cut the branch. Then strip off the lower leaves. Fill a pot with clean, damp sand. Make a hole in the sand with your finger. Place the stem of the plant in the hole and press the sand towards the stem. Put it in a cool spot with lots of sunlight. Keep the sand moist. Check the plant each day. If the plant seems to wilt, cut the top third of a plastic liter-sized pop bottle and turn it over the plant cutting. This will help keep the moisture in. After about six weeks, there will be roots on the stem of the cutting. You can then transplant it into potting soil. And there it is, a brand new plant. If you want to, you can tie a bow around the pot and give it to a friend or someone in your family. After about six weeks, there will be... Come in, Annie! Annie, come in! Roger, Ranger, Ranger. I just saw Ozzy over by the tent. Ranger, Ranger, I think I see Ozzy by the cabin. I see Ozzy by the log. Found ya, Ozzy! Boy, you guys sure are good trackers. I bet you can't find all the stuff that's hidden in the forest. Quick, let's go before they find us. Pew!
please, don't litter. <laughs> what would it be like to be a tree? Can you imagine all of the things that they see in their long lives? Some trees are thousands of years old. Imagine the stories they could tell if we could only hear them. Maybe if you become a tree, you could understand them better. Do you want to try? Okay, just listen closely and use your imagination. For more fun, you can act the story out yourself. One glorious summer morning, you're walking through a meadow filled with dandelions and flowers. All around you, there's a warm, tingly feeling in the air. Without warning, your toes begin to grow. You look down at them and watch them as they grow right out of your shoes. It tickles and it makes you laugh. You can no longer use your legs to walk as your toenails dig deep into the soft earth. But you don't mind. You know something wonderful is happening. You feel your toes growing longer and longer and reaching deeper until you're anchored in this spot. Your skin begins to turn rough and hard. As each second passes, your body and arms are becoming stiff. You can move them a little, such as when a breeze pushes against them, but that's all. Your fingertips and hair feel electric as they begin to dance in the wind. Soon your mouth closes and you can no longer talk. The only noise you can make is the rustling of your leaves and an occasional creak of your trunk. All of this excitement has made you very thirsty. So you soak water into your roots and slowly push it up through your trunk, down each limb to feed the leaves on each branch and twig. You can tell from the position of the sun that it's well past lunchtime and you begin to feel quite hungry. You know it will be impossible to eat in your usual way since you have no mouth or teeth to chew. As you try to think through this problem, you realize that your leaves are now full of water and you're grabbing rays of sunshine. They are using the sun's energy to make food. Your leaves use part of the water and part of the surrounding air to make sugar. Slowly, the sweet food is pumped down the branches and through the trunk to every part of your body. It tastes good and satisfies your raging hunger. You think to yourself, now that's a good lunch. But since you can no longer move your head from side to side, it's difficult to look around. But with your eyes, you spy a little brown squirrel searching for food near you. As he scampers up your trunk, his claws tickle your bark as if someone were lightly scratching what was once your back. He finds a nut on one of your branches and plucks it away. Ow! You felt that! It didn't really hurt. It just startled you because it felt odd, like something was being lifted away. Suddenly, you feel your roots being tickled by a bunny's nose as she sniffs around your roots. The squirrel tickles you again as he darts down your trunk and scampers away. You listen for him, but instead you hear crows calling in the distance. Caw, caw, caw! They're heading this way. You feel a pinch, then another, and another. Three large black crows perch themselves on your branches and begin to quarrel. Suddenly, the wind picks up and you sway back and forth in the breeze. This startles the crows and they noisily fly away. Caw, caw, caw! Until you can no longer hear their piercing calls. Soon you're alone in the meadow with just the flowers and the breeze, which you notice is getting stronger.
It isn't long before you notice that the sun has been covered up by dark rain clouds. Pitter-patter, drip-drop, splash! Big raindrops began to fall. Now your leaves are spreading out to catch the droplets and protect you like an umbrella. The soft, cool water is comforting after standing in the hot sun all afternoon. The rain washes the dust from your leaves and branches in the same way that water used to bathe you in the shower at home. You see a crack of light streak across the sky. Then, crash! You hear the rolling thunder. That sounded close. You watch the lightning dance across the darkening sky. It's like a fireworks display on the 4th of July. Look, there's one and another. My, how different it would be to be a tree.